One of the great things about TED is that when you come to an event like this, you often learn lots of new things. Today, however, I don't have a lot to say that's very new. What I have instead to share is what I like to call codified common sense. Unfortunately, common sense is neither uniformly nor universally distributed in the world. So sometimes a little bit of codification and repetition can be a very good thing. And I thought that the best place to start with this common sense would be to share with you a little story about my family. My dad is half Tamil and half Eurasian, which means he's got some smattering of the Portuguese who came to Southeast Asia from Goa in India and Portugal before that. My mum is half Pakistani and half Malay, which makes me slightly confused sometimes <laughs> about where I belong ethnically. And if you look at this slide, you'll see that there are lots of people in my family who are similarly mixed and multicultural. Here you see my young cousin, um, Dominic, who is half Sikh and one quarter Chinese, one quarter Tamil. This little girl, Giselle, is actually a lot older now, but she is half Chinese, one quarter Eurasian, one quarter Indian. And the consequence of this huge diversity in our family has been that we very often find ourselves in situations where the different cultures meet and where there can sometimes be quite comic outcomes. This is an example of a gathering of our family during Eid or Hari Raya, which we call it, uh, you know, the big celebration for the Muslim community here in Singapore. And I like to think that this is an example of the Starbucks menu nature of our family. If you line all of us up, you'd have on the one end the very, very creamy lattes, and on the other hand, you'd have black coffee, no sugar, no milk, and everything in between is also available. It's also meant that at times like Christmas time, because we are multi-religious as well as multi-ethnic, we found that we sometimes find ourselves in interesting situations. A couple of years ago, when I just got back from the US where I served my diplomatic posting, I was asked by my cousins to please, please be Santa Claus. And that was interesting, right? Because clearly I fit the build of what's required to be Santa Claus. I'm a Muslim. Many of my family are Roman Catholic. And yet we found a way, I think, to make Christmas a time of family togetherness rather than a time of noticing the differences between the cultures that we came from. Now, why do I tell you all these stories? Because very often, being involved in these multiple cultural situations can be a kind of toggling. And that was the title of my talk. I wanted to share a couple of other stories with you of how toggling in a place like Singapore can be particularly interesting, especially for someone who looks like me, because you'd expect me to speak some kind of Indian language, either Tamil or Hindi, but I don't. I speak Malay, and that's the language that I learned when I was in school, which means that sometimes when I try and order drinks from people who are ethnically Indian in a hawker center, I will be asked, as I speak to them in either Malay or English, the question that you see on this slide. Apa macam punya mama? Which literally means, what kind of Indian are you? Right? <laughs> Why are you speaking to me in a language that is not my own? Sometimes I find myself in situations like the second line there, where I was asked to pronounce many Tamil names in an academic ceremony where everybody was receiving a prize. And what I found was it was very alien for my tongue to feel what I call the rolling L's and lolling R's of the many, many diverse names I was being asked to say. I later wrote some poems about this, because I, I dabble in poetry in parts of my life. And I found that that was one way of working through the immense diversity that's involved here. Now, I bring all this up because I think the kinds of diversities that I've had to toggle, both ethnically and religiously, are part of a larger phenomenon that I like to call the center of the toggler generation. And all of us toggle. We may not call it that, but toggling is a key part of our life. To toggle means to switch from one effect to another, and we do this all the time. We toggle between TED Talks. We toggle on our phones. We toggle tabs on our laptops. We are always switching from one feature to another. We toggle cultures, as I just described, in a very micro way with my family, but we also do it in a very macro way between East and West, we do it between national cultures. We find that in places like Singapore, the framework of the Chinese, Malay, Indian, and other races continues to hold in a very broad way, but actually is starting to not break down, but starting to be much more complex and much more nuanced 
than it might have been before. We also toggle technological platforms. We're always thinking about how the big world of the internet can translate into a small space for us. We're always thinking about how cyber education can change, as Aisha talked about in her earlier talk. We're thinking a lot about how we augment ourselves as human beings, not just through spectacles, but through new technologies that we use in the rest of our bodies. And we are toggling between those features and those qualities all the time. We toggle the systems, the devices that we use. We're toggling parts. At some point, science may get to a stage where we can toggle DNA as well. And that has interesting consequences, I think, because it means that we have to toggle, as this slide shows, the different sorts of ways in which we learn. The slide here shows a couple of different examples of places where we're toggling areas of knowledge, not just toggling physically, but toggling mentally and intellectually. The Khan Academy, TED, PopTech are all ways in which we can constantly be exposed to multiple ideas and juggle them simultaneously in our minds. We toggle how we learn as well. Places like UWC and other great institutions of the world are constantly asking themselves, how do we teach differently? How do we flip the classroom such that we toggle not just the content of our knowledge, but the ways in which we learn? How do teachers teach in a way that is applied and not just academic? Mahbub talked about some of these ideas earlier as well, and I wanted to mention them here because I think they are fundamentally connected to what it means to be a toggler generation. There can be a dark side to toggling too. There can be very dark, dangerous things that the toggling of knowledge and the toggling of platforms can produce, as we see with examples of 3D printed guns that have produced violence and not just virtue. All of this, I think, boils down to a fairly simple fact. We can either face the necessity of toggling by asking ourselves, how do I do it? I'm frustrated. I can't possibly be doing so many things at the same time. Or we can realize that polarities and paradoxes are actually natural to humanity. All of our lives, we've had to toggle. And if we can take the ease with which we toggle on our phones and transfer that into all the other toggling that we do, the toggling of ethnic identities, the toggling of religious and cultural identities, then I think that changes the way in which we approach the act of being human. I make public policy in my work, and we toggle in governance all the time. At one level, governance is all about how we provide for the security of people that we serve. How do we provide for their safety and for their health? But we also have to deal with a world of scarcity. We can't provide security at all costs. We have to do it in a way that is efficient and that makes the most of the resources that we have. We also have to do all of that in a world that is volatile, that is driven by flux and change and turbulence. <coughs> And that means that sometimes we need to build long-term institutions, not just efficient ones. But that's not enough either. As we try to govern, we're trying to deal with greater complexity. We're dealing with situations where cause and effect are not always clear. And we need to understand large systems, not just small, micro-level ones. And even that is not enough. Because as technology becomes stronger, as all of us learn to toggle the knowledge and the informational platforms that are out there. We want a government that can deal more with diversity, that can be compassionate, and that can bring together the kinds of different communities that exist. And we do all of this. We cannot, as public policymakers, tell ourselves that we only do one of those things, or three of them. We have to do all of them. In short, we toggle between all of these different levels and deal with multi-layers of governance. The big question that I'm asking myself these days is what does all this mean for us? For those of us who are interested in creating public value, in producing innovation that changes the world, in serving communities that are larger than ourselves. And I think there are a few implications for what a toggling leader might be, a leader who can lead a toggling generation. The first, as I mentioned earlier, is to accept that toggling is a part of everything we do. We must have long-range vision but we need to be rooted in the reality of today. 
We need to serve ourselves as much as we try and serve others. We want to be rooted to strong ethics and values, while at the same time being resilient and adaptable to multiple situations. We need to manage change as much as we manage now and deal with the realities of today. And when you put that together, rather than feeling torn in different directions, I think it is possible for the inner star of each individual human being to actually be realized, which is why in this diagram, I've actually put all the material together in a star framework. And we use this for some of, some of the youth leadership programs that I volunteer with. Another way of thinking about it is to use the terms of the great educator from Harvard, Howard Gardner, who says that to deal with the future, we need five types of minds. Not just one, but five. We need a mind that is disciplined, first of all, that understands one particular discipline really well and an area of knowledge. But from that, we need a mind that is also creative, that's asking new questions, that is synthesizing across multiple disciplines, and that is also respectful and takes into account the fact that what it deals with is multiple viewpoints and potential um, perspectives that don't actually agree with what the person might be saying. And most importantly, Gardner talks about the importance of ethics, which is the fact that we deal with a world that is much larger than just us. And if we can see ourselves as part of bigger communities and toggle that together with the disciplines that we come from, then we have a mind that is ready for the volatility and the ambiguity of the future. I mentioned earlier that I write poetry, and I wanted to end with some observations from poetry, because codified common sense is nowhere more beautiful than in the wisdom of the ages that the great poets have tried to encapsulate. And when you think about it, all poets have had to toggle as well. Robert Frost, in the beautiful poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, toggles between answering the call of the woods that are lovely, dark, and deep, but also knowing that he has responsibilities and promises to keep today. T.S. Eliot, in the wonderful poem, Little Gidding, toggles between understanding the new and the old and how they coexist in a fundamental reality. He realizes that after we explore, the more we innovate, the end of all our exploration will be to arrive where we began and know that place for the first time. Walt Whitman is probably the most toggling of toggling poets, if you think about it. Because he asks himself, I have so much to do. I have to toggle so many things. How do I do it? And Whitman says, do I contradict myself? Does the act of toggling pull me in different directions that end up creating contradictions or polarities and paradoxes, as I mentioned earlier? And the answer is quite simple. He says, very well then, I contradict myself. Yes, I do, but I am large. I contain multitudes. The toggling generation and the toggling leader are able to contain multitudes. And my wish for all of you is that as you think about the promises you have to keep, as you think about trying to know the places you come from for the first time, that you also will be able to grow large and to contain all the multitudes of a rich, diverse, toggling life. Thank you.